Volvo Cars Wind Tunnel in Gothenburg is one of the most advanced facilities of its kind in the world. Here they carry out advanced tests in order to, amongst other things, reduce fuel consumption in tomorrow's cars. Normally they carry out these tests at speeds of between 70 and 90 kilometers an hour. But here it is also possible to simulate speeds of up to 250 kilometers an hour. It's also possible to control the temperature in here from 20 degrees up to 60 degrees Celsius. Most wind tunnels that were built in the 70s or 80s, um, the car was sitting still here in the wind tunnel and the wheels and the floor were also standing still. But that's not the case when you drive on the road because the wheels are turning and the road is going underneath the car. So what we've done in the last uh, two years is we've rebuilt our wind tunnel so we can simulate the road moving underneath the car and we can rotate the wheels as well. So that way we get the exact simulation of how the air passes both over the car and under the car and we get a better result. Before cars are driven into the wind tunnel and the tests can begin, a considerable amount of preparation is required. These types of tests have become increasingly important in order to succeed against the incredibly tough competition that exists on today's car market. Because of the increased demands on uh, fuel economy um, and competitiveness on the market, we need to uh, reduce our fuel consumption as much as we can at the same time as we make our cars attractive to customers. So to do this, we have to be looking for lots and lots of small changes on the design of a car which may or be, may not be visible to a customer and in, if we add up all those changes together we can get a significant change to the fuel consumption. It is vitally important that a new design is not merely a design but also contributes to reducing wind resistance and thereby fuel consumption. Here in the wind tunnel designers quickly find out whether or not their creations function in practice. Sometimes we can work together because there's some ideas on a car which a designer really wants to work and it's good for aerodynamics as well. Sometimes we have to make compromises where certain shapes have to be adapted to be aerodynamically uh, optimized and in other cases we do changes to the underneath of the car where the customer doesn't see this anyway so it's an invisible part. On the new Volvo C30 there is a good example of how work here in the wind tunnel changed the design before the model went into production. On the original design the radius on the rear lamp was quite soft all the way up to the top of the car. But we found in our testing in the wind tunnel, if we made the radius a little bit sharper just at the top here, we could reduce the aerodynamic drag of the car quite significantly. And this relatively small change resulted in lower fuel costs. For a normal customer, just this, this little change that you can't really see actually reduces the fuel consumption by between 5 to 6 litres a year. And it's a simple statement of fact that today's car buyers not only appreciate but also demand that car manufacturers make great efforts with this type of research. Uh, I think the customer notices it when he buys the car and sees what fuel consumption it has. Because we have to work with both aerodynamics, weight, uh, drive, drive lines, and, uh, etc. To, to build a complete package. And all those packages need to be optimized as far as possible. It's my job to see that the aerodynamic part of the car is as optimized as it can be and the car is attractive to appeal to the customer. A lot is going to happen in this area over the coming years. You're going to see uh, more and more uh, aerodynamic work done on the underside of a car and probably on to the wheel shapes, wheel houses, but also in the general proportions of car. I think probably in the next 10 years we'll see uh, there'll have to be changes towards cars which are smaller and uh, not necessarily rounder, they won't look the same. It's very important that we have to maintain our images of Volvo, for example, that we're not confused with the competitors, but we can uh, make lots of small changes. It'll be an evolution on the upper surface and a revolution on the underside.